Hi, I'm Ehsan. I'm a PhD student at the IIT University of Copenhagen. In this video, I'm going to talk about our work, profiling and monitoring deep learning training tasks. These days, we observe that GPUs are suffering from underutilization problem. And a study on a lot of jobs submitted by several users on a real world cluster shows only around 52% GPU utilization on average, which it is energy inefficient. And indeed, it's a waste of hardware resources. It is because compute and memory requirements of the models we are training do not match with the modern giant GPUs we have. For example, consider H100 GPU that is equipped with a lot of compute and memory capabilities. On the other hand, we have models here specifically for image classification tasks, starting with ResNet 50, which has around 25 million trainable parameters to the basic L, uh, to the state of the art model, which has around two and a half billion parameters. But not all of the development teams use the state of the art model to saturate the GPUs. They usually do transfer learning or they are using smaller models due to the nature of the problem they want to solve and due to the size of their data sets. So in this way, to come up with ideas to tackle the GPU underutilization problem, we need to understand the behavior of the training process and in general, the workloads we are submitting for execution on GPUs. And also we need to monitor the GPUs and in general, the hardware infrastructure we have. So, understanding the profilers and monitoring tools for GPUs is a necessity. The profilers that we have, we have NVIDIA Insight Systems, NSYS, and NVIDIA Insight Compute for NVIDIA GPUs. And also we can profile with framework specific profilers like PyTorch profiler that we chose for this work. Also we have TensorFlow profiler. These are trace-based profilers and Insight Systems is a system-wide profiler. And Insight Compute is a kernel-level profiler, which provides us with microarchitectural information above the GPU under the execution of a specific application. PyTorch Profiler runs as a part of the training process, but on the other hand, NSYS and NCU run as separate processes. PyTorch Profiler is easier to use because it doesn't need to install any standalone software and using it is just a matter of adding a few lines of additional code to the source code. NSYS provides us with more detailed insights into operating system and network. The downside of NSYS, it doesn't support work with MIG capability, which stands for multi-instance GPU, which is a new technology introduced by Amper architecture from NVIDIA, which makes it possible to split a large GPU into smaller GPU instances. And NCU has an intrusive nature. It halts the execution of a program and tries to rerun the whole application or the kernels inside that application for several times to gather the microarchitecture level information above the GPU under the execution of an application. And for the monitoring tools, for NVIDIA GPUs, we have NVIDIA System Management Interface, NVIDIA SMI, and NVIDIA Data Center GPU Manager, DCGM. NVIDIA SMI is usually used for performance configuration purposes, like changing the working frequency, and also for configuring MIG instances. On the other hand, DCGM makes this configuration purposes possible, and also it makes it further easier by providing other options, for example, grouping option. NVIDIA SMI tracks a range of high level metrics like GPU utilization, memory consumption. On the other hand, DCGM makes it possible to track finer grained performance metrics like SM active, SM occupancy. The downside of NVIDIA SMI is that it's not able to monitor MIG instances, but DCGM monitors MIG instances as well. For understanding the GPU utilization metrics and how they change when we submit different amount of work to a GPU and also studying the overheads and strengths of the tools that we mentioned earlier, we designed two experiments. In the first experiments, we developed the CUDA benchmark to analyze GPU utilization metrics to see by submitting different amount of thread blocks, which they contain different number of threads inside them, how these metrics that we choose for GPU utilization, they vary. 
In experiment two, we selected two models representing light workload and heavy workload. We trained them for five epochs and those workloads, those models are developed on PyTorch. For light workload, we selected a small CNN and we trained it on MNIST dataset. And for the heavy workload, we chose ResNet 50 model and we trained it on ImageNet dataset. And the batch size is 32 for the ResNet and also for the small CNN as well. And we run our experiments on NVIDIA DGX A100 station machine. And for PyTorch profiler and Insight Systems profiler, we selected default settings. And in default settings, PyTorch profiler does backtracing and accordingly collects more data compared to the Insight Systems. And in our overhead experiment and a study, we dropped Insight Compute due to its intrusive nature. On, experiment for, on, on, on our first experiment for studying GPU utilization metrics, on our micro benchmark, we increased the number of thread blocks and also the threads inside those thread blocks as it's visible on X axis. And the Y axis shows the utilization and how the metric changes due to the amount of the work submitted to the GPU. The first GPU utilization metric, which is very high level and it is defined as the percentage of time that GPU was executing at least one thread block consist, uh, consisted of one thread over the sampling period. And we observed that the variance of this metric is not revealing enough information about how a GPU is utilized. So for the second metric, we adopted GRACT from DCGM, which stands for Graphics Engine Activity. And it is defined as the percentage of time that any, per any portion of graphics or compute engines were active over the sampling period. And we observed that this metric also doesn't reveal a lot about how the GPU is utilized. So we went into finer grain metric and we selected SM Active, which is defined as the fraction of time that a SM were executing a thread block consisted of at least one thread average over all SMs. And we observe that this metric reveals how a GPU is utilized when we increase the amount of work we submit to that GPU. Also, we looked at SMOC, which stands for SM occupancy and defined as a degree of parallelism over the maximum support parallelism on SM. And we observe that this metric also shows the amount of work submitted to a GPU. We defined the first two ones as coarse grain and the last two ones as fine grain ones. And our takeaway from this experiment is that coarse grain utilization metrics can be misleading and we have to be careful when we come up with ideas to improve the GPU underutilization problem. On, on the second experiment, uh, on the overhead of the tools, here we delve into time overhead of the tools and we observe that the monitoring tools, time overhead is negligible and the time overhead of profilers is noticeable. And for the PyTorch in heavy, heavy case, we dropped it because it takes longer time to post-process the gathered information. And also we learned here that we don't need to profile a training process for whole, uh, for, multi for multiple epochs. And profiling just for one iteration might be enough because one, one iteration might show the enough information that we need to know about the training process. And also we looked at the space overhead of the tools and for the monitoring tools, we uh, save the information provided by monitoring tools into text files. On the other hand, the profiler does the saving process automatically. And we observe that profiling tools has much higher space overhead compared to the monitoring tools. On studying the CPU overhead of the tools, here we show only the results from light model. And we observe that the a heavy model also follows the same patterns. We see that 
CPU utilization overhead of profiling tools is higher than the monitoring tools till the time that the training process finishes. And also when the training process finishes, profiling tools take time and use the CPU for post-processing purposes. And on studying the CPU memory overhead, also we saw the same patterns that the uh, profiling tools use more system memory to profile. And also when the training process finishes, they use more memory to post-process the collected traces. And also we, uh, we delved into studying the GPU overhead uh, when we use these tools and we selected uh, SM active, SM occupancy and GPU DRAM, GPU DRAM utilization metrics for looking at the overheads. And we observed that the overheads of these tools are negligible. To wrap up this talk, if we want to come up with optimizations at the model level, using framework specific profilers might be enough. If we want to dig deeper into operating systems and systems, using inside systems is a choice. And if we want to come up with kernel level optimizations and we want to optimize a kernel in CUDA level, we can use inside compute. And when we profile, it's better to keep it limited to the amount of the code we want to profile. And we are suspicious that we are gonna find a bottleneck there and also do it for a reasonable amount of time. For example, in training case, profiling for an iteration might be enough because an iteration uh, possibly is gonna show the behavior of whole training process. And finally, for online decision-making purposes, using monitoring tool due to their low overhead with finer grain matrix is recommended. Thanks for your attention.